The market is signaling that we're going higher. The Bitcoin cheerleaders are promising us the moon. But are there some underlying indicators showing us that it's not such a smooth ride? Welcome back, everyone. So is there a pattern brewing in the Bitcoin space right now? Why I'm saying this? Hear me out. We have the announcement from Swan that they're going to restructure. And it was fairly sudden, according to us, the market participants, right? Uh, based on the information that we saw, I believe, right, that this was a sudden change. That's my that's my opinion. And it, even I'm not saying it's necessarily correct, but there are other people in the space that have been that that are a part of this space and that are very familiar with the situation that also believe that there was a sudden change. Now, this clip is not about Swan, but more or less the sequence of events, right? So we had Swan put that information out a couple of days ago, right? Right at the beginning of the week. And then all of a sudden, the following day, what do we see from FoldApp? FoldApp announces that they're going to be going public through a what is known as a SPAC. And, and essentially, not to dive into the nuance of equities too much, essentially, it is a public company that Fold is going to be merging with. Okay, that company is already public. They already have shares. Fold merges with them. Okay, and then they create a new ticker symbol, which is essentially Fold, right? So it's... It's a, a cheaper way for a company to be able to go from private to public, okay? Uh, it's also very desirable for companies that may not have a, um, a liquid enough or a, I guess you'd say, a good enough financial situation to go public on their own. Now, back in 2021, this way of going public was heavily touted by people like Shamat, right? And of course, for people like him who have invested in companies, right? Uh, a uh, ser different uh, Series B, Series C rounds of, of investment, or in his case, it's probably Series A. Um, but my point is, is that this method makes it possible for people like him, okay, to extract the value out of their investments a lot faster. So, of course, he was touting this, and, and naturally, right, it blew up that way of going public did not work out very well. People quickly realized that a lot of these companies that were going public in this way actually did not have very good fundamentals and um, really shouldn't have been going public. But anyways, anyways, okay. So Fold, Fold announces this, right? They're going public. But at the same time, at the same time, they also announce, hey, they're going to be using the Sailor playbook. They've already got a thousand Bitcoin on their books and now they're going to be buying Bitcoin and keeping it as their treasury reserve for the corporation. And of course you should, you know, the CEO of the, the CEO of Fold is, you know, is essentially saying, hey, look, you know, these shares are a great opportunity. Now, of course, this show is not investment advice, blah, 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 use your brain, all of that stuff. My point is, is that uh, when it comes to this, number one, I'm, I'm a Bitcoiner and I buy Bitcoin, but number two, uh, if you are thinking about looking into this type of stuff, I would at least do yourself a favor, wait till they go public, wait till they start providing their numbers, because what you need to understand is right now you have no, we have no insight into this company's numbers, okay? The only people that are going to get that insight are very wealthy um, people who desire to become shareholders, right? Like very high ups, possibly, you know, venture capitalists or something like that, that decide they, you know, or capital allocation funds, whatever it is, essentially a bigger player. They will get some, they, they will get some access to the numbers before they go public. But people like you and me, we do not get access to this data before they go public. So you have no idea how much debt Fold has taken on. You have no idea what percentage they're paying for that debt. And you have no idea when that debt is due. So for me, eh, I, I would be cautious, but I do appreciate that they're spinning a very positive story. Now, it's not over. Also, what happened this week? There was big news out of Marathon. While everyone was sleeping, Marathon Digital is hit with a $138 million verdict 
in a contract breach case. That's right. The verdict issued in a federal court concluded that Marathon had breached a non-disclosure, non-circumvention agreement with Michael Ho, the chief strategy officer of Marathon's direct competitor, Hut 8. And then immediately after we saw that, that $138 million fine, look at this, Marathon announces today, hey, they've purchased $100 million worth of Bitcoin and effective immediately, we're once again adopting a full HODL strategy. So right away, right away, the key is to draw attention away from the $138 million fine, okay, that they just that that they now have to pay. And instead, no, 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 pay attention to the to the hundred million dollars in this hand. Don't pay attention to the 138 we're losing over here. Pay attention to the hundred. And and of course, what this is supposed to do is, well, you know that Bitcoin's price is going up. So, you know, it's not going to take long for that hundred million dollars to become so much more. Okay, so what do I think of all of this, right? Because that, that's really what this is this is all about. We're seeing these three different examples, right? We had the Swan News, we had the Fold News, we've got the Marathon News. What's going on, right? What's going on? Well, I genuinely think, uh, I genuinely think that there is, there's troubled waters when, when it comes to these Bitcoin corporations. And I, I used to, so, and again, this could be my mistake. I used to believe that when a company um, comes out and tries to show its strength, it's because it's uh, essentially trying to let everybody know that, hey, we are viable. And yeah, that is indeed a framing that is used. But what I'm learning more and more is that a lot of companies that come out and show these um, and do these shows of strength, oftentimes it seems to be the canary in the coal mine uh, it seems to be that when they come out and tell you that everything is great and look at us, we're, you know, we're doing a hodl strategy and we're doing full reserves and this and that, it's really because they're trying to get the average person not to pay attention to what's going wrong. Now, all of this, right? Like, well, what does this all mean? Is Bitcoin's going to zero? Like, no, it doesn't mean Bitcoin goes to zero. None of these companies are Bitcoin, right? Like none of these, th th these are all just adjacent companies all around Bitcoin doing their business. And, and that's all there is to it. So could that mean that there's temporary uh, temporary price fluctuations in Bitcoin as this type of stuff happens? Yeah, indeed, uh, but that's just markets. This is just market dynamics. It doesn't mean anything. Now, does it mean that any one of these or all of these companies end up, you know, proverbially blowing up, right? They, they disappear. Well, you've got some Bitcoiners that think that these companies aren't gonna be around in, in a few years, specifically uh, like Marathon Holdings. Um, or even, or even fold app. I, I personally, or Swan, right? Uh, I personally, I don't know. You know, I have no idea if they're going to be around or not. But what I can say is this: in each instance that I have seen a message from the company that is constantly trying to drown out the reality of their situation with bullish headlines, that's a red flag. To me, that's a red flag um, because what I've seen from companies that are a little bit more reasonable uh, with with their takes, they are often willing to acknowledge um, their losses and then they often lay out a plan as to a strategic plan as to how they're going to turn this around. So instead of doing the spin media news, they actually they actually put together a plan and then they advertise that plan and they say, hey, we know that we messed up. We understand what we did wrong over here. And this is what we've come up with. And these are the targets that we believe we can meet. Now, who knows, right? We're going to see how this plays out. All I'm trying to say is there is a lot of noise in this space. And a lot of times the messaging is not as it appears. That's all I wanted to talk about today, guys. Bitcoin only. Have a great weekend. I'll catch you next week.